Good morning, friends. Welcome to the Biblical Perspective for August the 21st, 2022. I'm going to put the Snoopy cup down here and get started because it's going to be hard to really fit this into the amount of time that I'd like this video to be like without talking to you all the day. I'm going to deal with a difficult subject. How do you destroy the United States of America? Is there a satanic, is a, a satanic strategy behind all of this? The beast is busy trying to take down the United States. Why? And if you were going to do that, what would you do? Well, you could probably come up with 20 or 25 things, but I'm going to deal with six today and talk to you about, first of all, why the beast hates the United States so badly. And for some of you who've been looking at biblical prophecy, you notice that there doesn't seem to be the wonderful big brother good country that's out to save the world as America seemed to be the one to take on that mantra in the 20th century, starting from the middle of the century, World War II, all, all the way to the end. That country doesn't seem to be in focus and on stage for these last day's events. Why is that? It's not that we have disappeared, but as I would support, it has become just a part of one of those big empire animals that's described by Daniel in his prophecy that make up the end time stage. We're just one of those characters up there fulfilling our role. Well, if you want to, you know, weaken America so that she can't really take the lead role and can't be in charge and protect the things that are right and good and true, we have to start destroying it from the inside out. You destroy it morally as well as physically, and then you can perhaps make your scenario come to pass. Well, why is it the beast hates the United States so much? Remember, not only has it been a bastion of what is good and right and true in the world, the Christian church in America the, to send out so many missionaries and to share the gospel around the world, but we've also been literally the single nation that was at the forefront of creating the nation of Israel after World War II. The signature of President Harry Truman is probably the single most important event in 1948 that allowed Israel to begin as a nation. And our support has kept them in their position in the Middle East as the only free and democratic nation in that region for all of these years. It fulfills biblical prophecy about the regathering of the people of Israel for the end times to take place. That regathering, of course, takes place before the renewal and the revival takes place. Some of what we are seeing even today in Israel. You perhaps have seen some of the uh, videos. Check out Eric Steckelbeck's when he interviews one of the soldiers for the IDF. For the first time in a generation, we have many Christians actually fighting within the military of the nation of Israel. So, you know, because Satan, number one, hates Israel with everything in his being and wants to destroy him. As you have seen through history, he's tried to destroy the Jewish people. He pushed the Holocaust and all kinds of other things. They produced the Messiah. He can't stand it. There's a hatred inbred in the satanic kingdom against Jews. But on top of that, there's a hatred for the nation that has supported them, and that's the United States of America. Friends, it is no accident that when many of these radical Islamist nations like Iran have protests, they burn not only the flag with the Star of David on it, that is the Israeli flag, but they burn the American flag. They talk about Satan and the great Satan. That's how they refer to us. So friends, You've got to realize the beast hates the United States of America. The beast wants to destroy it. If you were going to do that, how would you? I'm going to give you six reasons today. There are many more as a part of the strategy. But if you were strategizing how to destroy the United States, what would you do? First of all, you would try to depopulate the citizenry, depopulate the citizenry. Our birth rate now, for those who've been in America most of their life, is way below two. It's down closer to 1.6 now, which means we are shrinking in population. Now, how do you make a country shrink? Now, to do this, uh, there are many, many strategies. I'm going to hit several of them today, though, and understand it's all a part of an interwoven gigantic jigsaw puzzle, but it all leads to the same thing, weakening of the nation, destruction of a nation in the end. And all of this being pushed by the leftist Marxist anti-God forces around the world 
that are trying to make the United States just another little asterisk in history. So if you're going to depopulate the citizenry, what do you do? Well, first of all, you push abortion. You want to kill as many babies in the womb as you can before they are able to get out and be raised to be the next generation of workers, taxpayers, citizens, and yes, soldiers. And we've gone from a situation where some politicians used to say, let's make sure abortion is rare and legal, to now it's become a mark of individualism. In some cases, it's like a badge of courage. Share the positive testimony about your abortion. What was it like? How many children have you killed in the womb? And, and uh, aren't you just so proud of what you were able to do to stand up for your right to just go work in a job and, and continue to build this beast <laughs> around us, but not ever have anyone to uh, you know, go on for the next generation that comes from you? It's a strategy that is working uh, in a way that's just amazing. Matter of fact, it's become one of the key issues for our fall elections because it's almost like there's only one of two viewpoints. Either you want abortion to be absolutely without restriction, legal, right up until the moment of birth. Don't put any restrictions on this or else. You're a fascist. You're a communist. You're, you know, you're, you're one of those Christians. It's pro-life. You know, uh, or you know, you're over on that side where now you're oppressing people. That's the way it's being projected. You're oppressing people by saying that you can't kill your children in the womb. So abortion is one of those things at the very top of that strategy. The second thing is to promote these alternate lifestyles. The entire LGBTQ plus SD minus, however many letters are in it now, that entire movement embraces a lifestyle that not only that God declares sinful, but it equals no children or few children. You can have some through some artificial means, or you can adopt some in some cases if you're in that particular uh, group. But those children, they're counting on being raised within the indoctrinated population that'll still believe whatever lies you're pushing. And then thirdly, you've got to push a crisis to unite people, a crisis that will make them have fewer or no children. We've got people standing up today saying that Mother Earth is suffering so much from the number of people that we have. We're so overpopulated, and I just want to be a part of solving the problem. And so I'm committing to not have any children. Well, now, when you say something like that, you do realize that if everyone took on your position, your country just disappears in one generation. I mean, it's gone. Yeah, we've got folks doing that, thinking they're doing the planet a favor. They're part of the new green religion, and they're worshiping Mother Earth. And yes, the ultimate end of that will be whatever country you are in is going to get weaker and weaker until the people who are actually having children come and take yours over. And then finally, you want to weaken those who are left. I don't want to get too deeply into this, but I want to recommend a video for you by Kim Iverson. It was put out August 12th this month in 2022, where she interviews uh, Dr. Peter McCullough. And the, the video is titled, look, at, look this up on YouTube, Alarmingly High Rates of Teen Myocarditis Found in Thailand, preprint 1 in 43. And it talks about that study and many other studies that have been done, which Dr. McCullough says, why didn't we do these here? Well, it's because it's just not popular to say that anything might be wrong with these shots you've been taking. The fact is, we're discovering heart damage among our population. And when we push these vaccines on younger and younger children, we're going to see more and more of this heart damage coming out. Not everybody gets it, but we were told in the beginning, oh, it's like one in millions. Give me a break. It's not bad. And now that we see these cases inflated and popping up everywhere, in particular, over a thousand European athletes that video chronicles that have passed out on the field or maybe died while they were in, involved in sports. And we see these issues coming up. We realize that somebody is busy weakening the, the current population. What kind of effect is that going to have in the long term? Well, no one knows because we've never done this before. So look, if you want to destroy the United States, first, you've got to depopulate the citizenry. Secondly, you've got to replace them with somebody to keep the economy going. So what are we doing? Something no other nation in the world is doing. We've thrown our borders open and just said, come on in. And we're doing this in such a way that we don't even know where they're going, what they're doing. We can't bet them. We don't even know which ones are part of gangs, which ones are involved in human trafficking or anything else. 
but 2 million illegals have invaded the United States just this year. And as we look at this ridiculous situation, there's just no answer with what to do. Now, I know Governor Abbott has been sending busloads of some of these to Washington, D.C. and New York to say, you folks that claim to be in sanctuary cities and started this mess, you politicians that have opened the border down here, well, the least you can do is take some of these people. Let's see how you like that. And they don't like it at all, do they? Well, this is all part of weakening our population because these outsiders who do not appreciate or know our history may not even have the same or even similar views are now a part of our population and will soon become, especially if some folks have their way, a part of the voting population very soon. And some folks are just counting on the fact that they will always vote far to the left when they vote. Now, I'm not sure that's true, but as you look at this situation, what does it do? It completely changes the demographics of America in such a way that we are no longer a cohesive nation that can stand in unity for certain purposes when the world, for example, goes to war. Well, thirdly, if you want to destroy the United States of America, you've got to destroy its economy, the greatest economy in the world. It's always been the, the engine for creating opportunity growth and the, the ability for folks to rise up from the ashes and actually get a job, start a business, work hard, and get rewarded for it. And because of that, the world really hates, and I say the world, the satanic world, the beast, really hates the United States of America and the opportunity that it provides. So you've got to mess up that economy. Now, I'm not going to deal with all the ways you can do that, but in particular, you create money out of thin air that weakens our currency and equals inflation. And that's all we've been doing here the past few years. Hey, there's a war happening in Europe. Let's just create $40 billion and ship it over there. <laughs> That'll work. We'll uh, just keep all these weapons manufacturers going and send the money, send the money. It's going to be easy. And we've got problems here. Let's just create another stimulus package. Let's create money. Let's create money to give to people that don't want to work. Let's just do anything we can to create money. When you do that, Economy 101, did anybody take that in college, in high school even? Uh, in Economics 101, you learn a basic, a basic truth. You create so much money that your money is now worthless. The price of everything goes up. And you're seeing that everywhere you go today. Yesterday, we tried to buy a bag of cat food for our kitty cats. And that, which used to cost $3 and a half, sometimes we get on sale for $2.98, it's now five bucks. And that's across the board. Whether you're trying to feed your cat or feed your kids, you are running into this inflation nightmare that's only getting worse. In response to that, our government passes bills with titles that you're supposed to be excited about. The Inflation Reduction Act. But then when you look at that bill, you'll find that there's nothing in there that's going to reduce inflation. There's only a bunch of stuff that's going to increase it. My goodness, do they think we're that dumb? Well, guess what? They're following through with it because in many cases, we are that dumb, that gullible to just accept what some of these politicians are throwing our way without any evidence of how it's going to work. Well, if you create all that money, you're weakening a nation, you're destroying the economy, and then you've got, though, you've got to create an enemy. It can be an imaginary enemy or a real enemy, but you got to create one to where you can say to the people, it's worth the struggle you're going through to transition because we have a greater purpose here. And the purpose right now is to save the planet. Climate change is killing us all. And if you aren't willing to sacrifice, now I know we, those of us who are in big government, we're not willing to sacrifice. We're going to jump on our private jets. We're going to go to Davos and we're going to go to the G7 and the G20 summits. And we're going to do all this. Stuff. We're going to spend money like crazy. And we're going to buy, buy fossil fuel and put in our private jets. But you can't. We're going to drive our big SUVs, you know, the gas guzzlers around with all my secret service and all the other people. Uh, that's fine. That's for us to do. But you've got to sacrifice if you are going to save the planet. So this is the excuse for the transition that makes us feel like, or we're supposed to at least feel like we're doing something good and that the pain is somehow worth it. Maybe you're saving the planet for the next generation, but then you gotta do something else. Number four, you've got to empower the beast. You've got to empower the beast. The beast in particular has got to have control over all the dissenters, especially 
freedom of speech. No, no, no. We, we can't start allowing that. If you start saying something that's inflammatory, we'll label you a terrorist. And this year, our own president has signed executive orders and other things. And whoever's behind what's going on out of the White House, I believe, is that little horn that's coming later. And whoever's doing this stuff has set it up to where our country now has the most ridiculous surveillance system. It's No, it's not as bad as Red China yet, but we're getting there fast. We've got an FBI and its up, or upper echelons that some are calling the Biden Gestapo. They selectively enforce laws. They don't arrest criminals who obviously need to be prosecuted, especially if you're the president's son. And then they go after people who are on the other side of the political fence from them. And they start violating things all throughout our constitution, even to the point of invading the residence of a former president of the United States. And the media complicit with all this. When they took Donald Trump's passports, Nor O'Donnell was on TV claiming, oh, no, they did not. That was a lie of the right. And then the next day, the folks got up and apologized and said, we're returning Donald Trump's passports that we took uh, at the Mar-a-Lago invasion. Oh, listen, this is what's going on all around us. And some of these things have been signed into law since, hang on, going back to Republican in, in, uh, administration with George W. Bush, starting right after 9-11 have empowered folks like the Department, Department of Homeland Security and like the Internal Revenue Service that's just getting permission to go out and spend money to add 87,000 new jobs, new agents to come after you to make sure you're paying your fair share plus of taxes. And of course, when it comes to IRS, hang on, you're guilty until proven innocent. And so all of these things are happening so that they can empower the beast and control us from within. Did you ever think that we would be militarized within our own country so that one particular party could attack the other and make them enemies? And if you listen, the media that's controlled with them by one of the horns of the beast, some 30 different media outlets are supported from George Soros's foundations who make sure that their program, their talking points are all the same, and they parrot them every single day. And those media outlets are always parroting the left's line, never bringing accountability, never offering even the opportunity for those who are committing crimes on the left to be prosecuted. But if you're on the right, my friends, you had better not get out of line, better not say the wrong thing, or you may be the next one in jail. Well, then not only do you need to empower the beast so the beast can take over, but you need to demonize your enemies. And in America, this kind of leans on what we've just been talking about. Now the enemies are being made plain. They are the conservatives, the Republicans being called Nazis, being called, you know, it's interesting. If you are a Nazi, what's the best way to deflect away from what you're doing? Call someone else a Nazi. That's the way it normally works. So conservatives, Republicans, libertarians, and yes, Christians, conservative Christians that do believe the Bible is the word of God and teach a biblical standard of morality. These folks are all being demonized. And you are wondering, why is this happening? We're supposed to be living in a free nation. What in the world is going on here? And when you look at exactly how this beast is pushing its agenda, all you have to do is look at what happened this past week. You think that your representatives actually represent you. If you're in West Virginia, for example, you think Joe Manchin is out to do what's best for West Virginians. He stood against his party on some things, but all it took was one of the horns of the beast, a guy named Bill Gates, to call him up. Yes, he bragged about this when interviewed about it, lobbied to save the tax bill. Why Bill Gates called Joe Manchin personally and talked to him. Why would you do that? Why would a Seattle-based elite call a West Virginia senator who's supposed to be only answering to his constituents? He talks about how it's about climate change. This is the most important climate bill ever. We've got to get into decarbonization. Uh, and because of what they did, they were able to get that one key vote to pass that bill so that now you and I will be paying for this imaginary climate saving bill that even by its own definition would only address 
a, a fraction of a degree of change over the next several decades, but it's going to make a big difference in what you pay for things. You're sitting in a nation, the United States of America, sitting on the greatest supply of oil and natural gas, the greatest resources of any nation in the world, not allowed to use it. Instead, we're being demonized for thinking about using it and told we've got to cut it out of our entire mentality. If we don't make things turn into solar panels and windmills, then we are going to be the enemy. Oh, friends, that's the kind of thing that weakens a nation and sets us up for the ultimate destruction that our enemies want to push upon us. And that's before we get to the final one, to number six. That's why I want to go to Daniel chapter seven and give you this verse before I give you the last point. You know, a lot of believers have said, we're not going to see any of these things in scripture happen. That stuff doesn't happen until after the rapture. And many who have promoted dispensational viewpoints through the years have said, no, the beast doesn't rise. The antichrist doesn't rise. None of this stuff happens until after the rapture of the church. I want to challenge that by one basic passage of scripture in Daniel chapter 7, beginning in verse 25. It tells about what this particular king that rises, a horn of the beast, what he does. It says he will speak words against the Most High. So he's going to blaspheme God himself. He's going to speak words against the Most High. So when Listen, it's already going on. If you speak against the commands of the Most High, you're speaking against him. So he speaks against the Most High and oppress the holy ones of the Most High. Now, if they're all in heaven, how are you going to oppress them? To be oppressed, you have to be present. Think about this. We have passages of scripture here talking about how the people of God, the saints, are going to be oppressed. Yet some are believing the idea that, oh, no, 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 we're not going to be here during that time. We're going to be gone, so we can't be oppressed. We'll be watching all this from heaven. You know, if you believe in that theology, you need to question it and think again. Because look what it's saying. It says that he's going to oppress the holy ones of the Most High. He will intend to change religious festivals and laws. That's right. You can't celebrate Christmas anymore. Now, you might have a winter holiday in your school system, but you can't use the E word. You can't use the E word around Easter. You can have a spring holiday, spring equinox. You can do all kinds of things, but don't you point to any of that Christian stuff because we can't do that around here. That offends people. Watch out. Hang on. And it says the holy ones will be handed over to him for a time, times, and half a time. Now, are the holy ones just the, the elect of Israel left over there that haven't discovered their Messiah yet? Or are they people who magically became Christians immediately after the rapture because they found that old VHS tape of Jack Dan Enfie or Tim LaHaye laying on grandma's uh, coffee table and they played it. They found an old VHS player. They played that thing and they understood what to do now that the rapture is taking place and they all just got saved in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. No, my friends, he's talking about the people of God who've never been promised a free pass from persecution. Yet some of us have been uh, indoctrinated into this lie that everything's going to be smooth until Jesus comes. No signs, no signals, nothing's going to happen despite everything Jesus says in the New Testament to the contrary. We're supposed to expect to fly out of here to escape and never see any of this happen. My friends, that's a lie that makes you unprepared for the days ahead. Get ready, my friends, because the Bible says we're going to be handed over to a beast. It's in the process of happening right now. And the believers of God around the world are suffering persecution because of this truth. What does it say? Ultimately, the court's going to convene. His dominion will be taken away. That beast will be destroyed. Jesus will come. Everything will be changed. But in the meantime, don't be surprised that you have to go through some of these things that are preparing for that great time of tribulation ahead. Now, finally, if you want to destroy the United States of America, what do you do? You weaken its military. You weaken its military. Through all of the above, the first five we've been talking about and some others, you weaken the ability of that nation to respond so that when conflict comes, it becomes just an old toothless lion that can roar, can make noise, but it can't win. 
Today, when you look at the dragon and the bear who have become partners, I'm talking about China and Russia, their combined military might far supersedes that now of the United States of America. They're developing new weapons rapidly. They're on the cutting edge of those things. The largest navy in the world, America's not even close. It's close, it's communist China. Those who are developing with rapid intensity hypersonic weapons and other weapons that are, by the way, strategic kind of weapons because they have sucked all our information right out of our back door through infiltrating us with things as simple as a TikTok app. They are discovering more about us. They've stolen all our secrets. They know all our plans. And when it comes time, if that time comes, that we decide we're willing to step into a conflict with the dragon and the bear, I can tell you, we will not prevail. We don't have the strength anymore. We might put up a good fight, but oh my friends, when we don't realize that the numbers no longer add up for our victory, and we dare would push the button against two armed nuclear powers and the others that they now are partnering with in the world of terrorism, in the world of Islamic terrorism, what would happen to the United States if we push that kind of conflict? Friends, I'm sad to say, I don't think it's a good scenario. And right now we are succumbing to all of those powers of people that want to make us weaker and weaker. Now, some of you are under the impression, and I'm gonna say this as I close, some of you are under the impression that we're gonna turn all this around. First, with this fall election, we are going to have a landslide, and we're, this is the most unpopular president ever. We're going to start turning the tide starting this fall. My friends, you've seen how things just happen. Stuff just gets in the way. Are we ever going to have another free and fair election? What will happen after this one? Will we actually have an election for president in 2024? These are all questions that you may think are just Oh, oh, of course we will. And, and of course people will respond. They'll vote the right way. Will they? Or have we seen the end of those kind of scenarios in America? Have we already seen the end of free and fair elections? Does the beast already have so much control that he knows that he can turn the tide just as much as he needs to, to maintain that dictatorial control that's now being expressed all over this country? watching this outside of the United States, you're thinking, boy, you sure are a pessimist on what's going on. No, I think I'm a realist when I uh, look at the scenarios of the end times and I see them being played out around us each and every day. And unfortunately, many Christians in this society are asleep at the switch. We don't see it happening. While the beast is changing everything, from the definitions of marriage and the definitions of gender and the definitions of what's right, turning it to what's wrong and turning what's wrong into what's right. All of it's happening. And by the way, just as scripture said it would. But our hope, my friends, is that there's a promise yet to be fulfilled. It's the promise, the blessed hope, the glorious return, and the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you don't know him, today needs to be the day that you look at the sacrifice he made for you on Calvary and say yes to Jesus, become a part of his forever family. Because when all this stuff is over in the world and the last, uh, the last play, the last scene of the last play is over, what's gonna really matter is do you belong to God? Are you a child of God through the precious blood of Jesus Christ? Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you again next week, each and every day as we wake up in God's word and every Saturday for another biblical perspective. God bless you.